There's a lot more to making canned corned beef than just dumping some meat in a can. From choosing the cut of meat to adding preservatives to sterilizing the can, this is all that goes into it. There are a few different ways to make canned corned beef. Science Direct describes one method in which the meat is canned without being cooked or cured. More commonly, though, it's pre-cooked and cured before going through the canning process. Delighted Cooking confirms that this is the case with most canned corned beef products. This method is sometimes called hot packing in the canning community, according to Wild Heaven Farms. While most consider beef safe to be canned raw, also known as raw packing, hot packing has its benefits. For one, hot packing can ensure that meat will keep its shape. This also prevents it from sticking to the sides of the can, which is definitely handy from a consumer perspective. Once it comes out of the can, it's preferable that canned corned beef stays formed into a solid block, which enables it to be sliced or diced for preparation. Cooking canned meat first helps to make it into a ready-to-eat final product. The name corned beef doesn't actually refer to corn, the grain. Instead, the name comes from the big pieces of salt added to the meat. Smithsonian Magazine explains that these pieces of salt were historically roughly the size of corn kernels. Around the 1600s, the British came up with the name corned beef to refer to beef cured using these kernel-sized pieces of salt. Although you may not see these large pieces of salt in your can of corned beef, salt is still a primary ingredient. However, since the meat in canned corned beef is usually cooked before canning, salt isn't the only thing helping with preservation. According to one Quora user who claimed to have worked for a canned corned beef processing plant, salt is added after the meat is cooked. This helps manufacturers to more easily obtain a concentrated meat product. The large grains of salt added after cooking also provide flavor to the final product. How is that? Salty. Canned corned beef falls under the category of processed meats in a few different ways. The first reason it's processed, according to PBS, is simply by virtue of it being canned. Second, as meat science explains, processed meat can also refer to cuts that are cured or smoked, such as sliced ham, Canadian bacon, pastrami, and others, corned beef among them. Third, because canned corned beef is also refined into smaller pieces during production, it's considered processed by that definition. The meat within a can of corned beef may start in large pieces, but after cooking and salting, its shape starts to change. During this stage of the production process, canned corned beef must be minced or ground up before getting packed and shaped within cans. For this reason, it qualifies as a type of restructured meat. Meat science defines that term as meat made from flaked, ground, or sectioned beef or pork, which is shaped into roasts, steaks, or loaves. No matter what method is used to break down the canned corned beef, it must also be chopped up to take on a new shape. When fresh corned beef, not the canned stuff, is being made, a few spices are usually added. Seasonings including black pepper, coriander, allspice, dill seeds, and mustard seeds are used to flavor the meat, giving dishes such as corned beef and cabbage their flavor. But canned corned beef is different. Check the ingredients list of cans of Hereford or Palm canned corned beef, and the only seasonings listed are salt and sugar. And the salt serves more as a preservative than a seasoning. Sugar is added to aid in the preservation process, as well as cancel out some of the taste from all the sodium, according to Meat Science. Another preservative you'll often find listed is sodium nitrate. It's an ingredient in Iberia and Excelsior's canned corned beef. This ingredient gives the meat a pinkish color, which canned corned beef is known for having. It also extends its shelf life and improves the flavor. According to WebMD, there are some health concerns surrounding sodium nitrate involving its link to diabetes and heart disease. Some sources recommend against consuming too much of it. The BBC explains that sodium nitrate is added to canned meat during the middle of its production process when a preserving liquid made of salt, water, and sodium nitrate is usually mixed in. Then the mixture is injected into various parts of the meat. The injection, as well as the addition of water, helps to ensure that the whole meat product will be preserved. The cut of beef chosen for the tinned product isn't the same as what you'd buy at a deli counter to make homemade corned beef. As Science Direct explains, traditional corned beef uses brisket, which comes from the cow's chest area, but canned corned beef isn't always made from brisket. No brisket! Tough, lean cuts of meat, such as round steaks, chuck roasts, or ribs, work best for canning. According to Very Meaty, canning meat also requires that as much fat as possible be removed. If too much fat is left in, it can cause multiple issues, including rancidity, sealing, and heat penetration. This is why canned corned beef makers opt for leaner cuts that have less fat. Brisket can opt to be pretty fatty, so that's why canners don't always use it. 
After the corned beef is packed into cans, another step is sometimes employed. Factories may sterilize the meat-filled cans. As Britannica explains, these sterilization processes usually involve bringing the cans to a certain temperature to prevent bacteria, such as the one that causes botulism from forming. To achieve sterilization, corned beef cans should be brought above boiling temperature, or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. During this process, containers of canned corned beef are placed inside a pressure cooker, then covered in hot steam, allowing both the food and its container to be sterilized simultaneously, Science Direct explains. Not only does this process sterilize the can, but also tenderizes the meat inside in a short amount of time. After the cans are finished sterilizing, they'll be removed from the pressure cooker, then set aside to dry off and cool down. After the canned corned beef is cooked, ground into smaller pieces, and then mixed with sodium nitrate, salt, and sugar, it's finally time to be packed into cans. This process is partially or completely automated in the factories where canned meats are made. At Keystone Meats, for example, a machine helps guide the meat into the individual cans. Then, the cans are led down a conveyor belt where lids are sealed onto the cans. The shape of the cans used can vary, and many brands of canned corned beef are known for having a unique can shape. Just look at the rectangular containers that Hormel's canned corned beef comes in. As it turns out, there are multiple reasons for this shape. According to The Guardian, the shape helps to make the canned corned beef easily sliceable for adding to sandwiches or diceable for adding to a corned beef hash. In addition, these cans lack a seam, allowing customers to slide out the entire block of meat all at one time. Historically, the shape also has ties to what was the easiest shape to store and transport in large amounts since canned corned beef has roots as a war ration. The steps of the canned corned beef production process are focused on making the meat survive in a can as long as possible. The steps involved are pretty laborious because cooked beef only lasts three to four days in the fridge, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. However, canned corned beef will last much longer. According to Very Meaty, unopened cans will last three to five years on the shelf. Once opened, though, canned corned beef's days are numbered. Leftovers will only last three to four days in the fridge. It's best to keep it stored in a glass or plastic container. If you opt to put your leftovers into the freezer, corned beef out of a can will last around three months, according to Still Tasty. Survival Freedom recommends putting your leftover canned corned beef into freezer-safe storage bags. Canned corned beef is produced so that it is ready to eat right away. And now, who's ready to eat my meat? It's not necessary to cook the meat before eating it, but before you start chowing down, you may find that just getting the can open comes with some unique challenges. Square cans of corned beef must be opened with a key. Luckily, this key comes attached to each can. Following the instructions carefully will best ensure your can gets opened. Instructables advises that you remove the key and find where a small metal tab protrudes from the side of the can. Next, place the tab through a hole in the long part of the key. Finally, rotate the key around the side of the can, bringing the tab with it. This will create a cut in the can's side that runs along the entire edge. When you're finished, the entire top of the can can be removed, exposing part of the inner brick of meat. If eating the meat out of the can with a fork isn't for you, there are plenty of ways to use the meat in recipes. Yummy recommends going light on the salt when using corned beef and cooking. Some ways to eat canned corned beef include corned beef hash with eggs, a quiche, or egg rolls. Despite the convenience of canned corned beef, it's not considered especially healthy. According to Very Meaty, canned corned beef is high in sodium, as you might expect given how important salt is in the production process. It's also pretty high in fat and cholesterol. It's been linked to illnesses like heart disease and cancer. However, some potential nutritional benefits come with eating canned corned beef. It typically has no carbohydrates, and each serving is high in protein. Ox and Palm brand corned beef, for example, has 11 grams of protein per serving. The Mayo Clinic suggests that a 165-pound person should consume about 60 grams of protein per day, so a serving of corned beef is a good start toward that goal.